Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Reality with Diva D. And this is going to be my episode recap of Basketball Wise. Are you ready? Are you ready? So the name of this episode is Beneath Me. Episode 19, Season 11. So here's the deal for me. Jackie and Brandon, Brandy talking. That's how the episode opens up. My thing with Brandy is she was thanked for her services. But this is the person that you keep bringing back. What is so interesting about her? <laughs> I have no idea. But <laughs> she throws Jackie under the bus every chance she gets. And I think the reason why she does interact with Jackie on some type of level is because she feels guilty but Jackie has been a friend to all of them even Evelyn see what Evelyn needs to remember before she called her daughter and which she never did she never did do this before she was called a builder or Evelyn was snooping around in her business then I don't know what it is about Jackie that Evelyn finds a target in. I think she finds a target in women that intimidate her. Her and that vein in her forehead. And Jackie asks her about the baby because Jackie loves the kids. But we're not going to talk about the car. Who I named my little girl after. My daughter's name is Takiri. So, I didn't like the whole Takari Ka, the car part, but I did like Tahiri's name on Love and Hip Hop. So I mixed in Tahiri and Takari and made it Takiri. So that's how my baby got her name. <laughs> I named my baby after Jackie and Tahiri from Love and Marriage Huntsville. So Jackie said that she wants to hug baby Jason. And then I don't know why we call this 12 year old baby, but I mean, let's go with it. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. And um, Brandon's like, um, well, you know, you have to come see his mama before you can see the baby. And she's like, well, you know, I do apologize for that. I think Jackie is sincere about this apology. But I don't think Jackie was ready to be around those ladies in that capacity because she knew she was going to get ganged up on. Now, Brandon says that she don't like Jackie's latest behavior. Now, what behavior is that again? What has Jackie done to these people? I'm lost because most of what she's done to them or they could quote unquote think they that she's done to them are responses. I'm just saying. So I'm about to do what Monique does because, you know, all the girls have nicknames. Right. So Giselle from now on is going to be sleeping pill. That's from Monique over there on Potomac. That's what she called. Uh. Rapping. She could have called herself that as well because Monique is boring, but that's neither here nor there. We over here on basketball. <laughs> so, um, Franklin Turtle, aka Brooke, is getting her man's name taken off her hand because the new guy and her are now official. We'll talk about that because you don't want people to talk about your door. And you making that a story now. So. The one that passed. Mm -hmm, she is making a story now. But I'm going to call you still sleeping pill. Sleeping pill Giselle. Giselle. She's there with them. And then Evelyn is there. Evelyn ain't got shit going on. I just want y'all to know that. Did y'all miss Evelyn. When she was gone. I did. I'm going to surprise him. I'm going to have these covered up because um, I don't want him to see another man's name on my body. Prince, how are you guys? Well, Prince going to be in town in a few days. You know what? That was sleeping pills. I was about to ask you something. 
see that Brooke has a vein popping out in her head right there as well. Now, if the veins pop out is because it's trying to do expression, but it can't do expression because of the Botox. And then the vein pops out instead. I'm just saying. But you know, Erica Miller is the original vein head. So, um, Evelyn is trying to make things right between Cheyenne and Brooke. And Brooke said, I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm, I don't like her embarrassing me in front of a room full of bitches. I don't even know. See, Brooke don't have anything going on either. Okay. So what they have decided to do is since they have this, all this nothing going on is to attack Jack. So Jen and Brandy meet and she has expertise in the process of producing. Jen is nobody's expert. If she was anybody expert in anything, what she needs to do is find out how to keep from getting these young scams. Shout out to uh, Sam. Goodbye. So, Brandon lets Jen know that she had a conversation with Jack. All right, because she was supposed to come to your cooking event, right? Well, she's going to be in my movie. So, I decided that I would give her one more chance. Girl, you not giving her one more chance. But you know what? Now, like I said, Jen can hang a suit. It's those top of her ears that's so big that lean down. You think she, she would get those things laid down seeing as how, you know, she's a rich bitch. I'm just saying. And to pay the young scammers restitution, why was she looking crazy about the 250000 I'm just saying. Oh, by the way, she lets her know that Jack is in her movie. Ain't nobody going to see that. Well, Brandy says she apologized to me, and then the next thing, Giselle is so excited. She on her way to the airport to go pick up Prince. Nothing to see here. She's excited to see her son. They meet up, moving right along. His best friend says she wanted uh the wife figure to see um her son practicing. And she ready for her come home because she needs some help with the wig. Oh yeah, you know when a stud take on a man's role, he she's taking on a man's role, so she ain't gonna help you. I reached out to Jackie to meet up because she's in the movie. And we're not gonna talk about we're not gonna spend much time talking about this movie. What is going on is she wants to have a parlay, not a ponderosa. And Jackie said, Oh, you took my shit and you calling it a parlay. <laughs> ponderosa. Well, Jackie, you know that's right. She she's organizing this mess. Now, Jackie is delusional. And she thinks that she has a sisterhood with Jennifer outside the bitches. But child, bye. Stop it. You do not. Jackie, stop throwing around that word sisterhood. Because like Evelyn said, you're a sisterhood to nobody. That's the other way around. They're not sisters to you. So stop trying to bring this group together. Evelyn... Is going to always be their mama as long as Shawnee is her mom. So Jaseel takes her son school shopping. I mean, uh, suit shopping, and uh, she she tries to bond with him. But you could tell this boy has not been raised by her, cause he don't have much conversation for. Her. Yeah, he might love her, cause she's talking about it's hard I have been by myself. Why didn't you bring him with you? This is a weird dyad trap here. Because it seems like to me, she would have brought him with her. Maybe he wanted to stay in West Point on that superstar football team that's out there. The child, that golden wave. I don't know. I mean, what, is that a go? Are they the golden? Green wave. Green wave. Some kind of wave. Tupelo is the golden wave. Okay, so I mean they're in our district, but we're champions as well. 
we four eight, they five eight. Baby, if our schools combine, we'll be like they're supposed to. One that's neither here nor there. Now her son is cute pie. I'm just saying. How do you really feel about me and Tasha getting married? He said he's happy for them. You know, it's not a big deal to a lot of millennials and most of the people that's a millennial Gen Z. It's not a big deal to them because a lot of people think it's an agenda that's forced in their faces. No, it's the tolerance of the Gen Xers. <laughs> That translated to the millennials and the uh, Gen Zs. It was us who started becoming more open-minded to alternative lifestyles. I'm just saying. It was the Gen Xs. Not the boomers. Not the millennials themselves. It was us who teach tolerance. Because we were independent. Like I said, most of us raised ourselves. I don't mean that we raised ourselves like that, like that, because my mama was here. My dad was here. I was raised in a two-parent household. What I'm saying is we were more independent and could be because our lives were completely different. It was just a, a magical time growing up in the 80s and 90s. So, Brandon meets up with the three switching bitches. And, um, you know, see, the thing about it is, Evelyn does not like uh, Brandon. She wants Brooke all to herself. But she knows Brandon is really friends with Brooke. So, she's sort of like a stumbling block. But, of course, Jennifer lets them know about the young scam and how she owes he owes the $250,000. And yeah, yeah, Evelyn gets in confession. Do I need to start looking into um the young scammer, Christian? Of course you do. Get out of Jackie's business. Find out what's going on with the young scammer and his trading. Do that. Stop your friend from making a big mistake and marrying another young scammer. I'm just saying. Now, she was married to the mosquito bite. Or I like to call him not. We all had nicknames in my uh, high school. And my friend, my classmate, we called him not. So, he didn't have a not like Eric. It wasn't like his. But he did indeed have a not head. All over. He had a not head. But this fella, I don't mean like not a head like. His hair wasn't kept. I mean, he had like a big old head with. <laughs> I'm just glad they don't see my videos. Because <laughs> I tried to get my classmates to subscribe. Honey, they don't subscribe to me. My, uh, most of my, um, my analytics said that most of my, um, viewers are from out of state. So, Mississippi don't support me? What the fuck? <laughs> what are y'all doing anyway not reminds me of not so that's why i call eric not and not mosquito bite either way jennifer was indeed married tonight which does make her an ex-basketball wife only thing evelyn could say i'm a fiance for 11 years but you can say a fiancé to who? You only married Chad and y'all were married 23.5 seconds. Does that count? I'm just saying. So, Brandy brings up her cancer. And she says that people always throw darts at her about Jason because he slept with so many women. But nobody knows how much he loves her because he stuck beside her when she had cancer. Yes, she talks about the cancer again. Now, immediately with my psychology brain and my social work brain, because when I was at Jackson State, 
I learned about biology. So I immediately thought to myself, did his sleeping around contribute to her ovarian cancer? Uh, see, ovarian cancer is cancer of the ovaries, and then cervical cancer is cancer of the cervix. Whereas they are all feminine issues, they take two different tests because I've been tested for all of it because I have. Um, female issues so they actually have to go in and take a sample out of your uterus I mean out of your ovaries to check for ovarian cancer and then look at your ovaries on a sonogram for cervical cancer of course you know you get your pap smear a pap smear does not detect ovarian cancer however they are all a part of the reproductive organs. So, just in my humble opinion, I think that he did have some contribution because it's no way, even though this has not come out, I'm just, this is my opinion. I don't think she has never been burnt. And I believe, I can't believe that him sleeping with 340 women and then coming back to her, it's no way that he didn't rob dog. So, I think I'm going to have to agree with the people who are saying that that's the contribution. Now, I immediately thought about it myself. And so I had to go back into my mind and think about what could possibly cause this. Because, you know, cervical cancer is caused by HPV, which HPV is a STD, technically. Um, and it comes from men. See, this is what I don't like about men. They ain't too bright about the woman's uh, reproductive system. So they'll say that, you know, HPV is a disease for women. No, it's a disease spread by men. Usually uncircumcised men that don't clean themselves properly. Yeah. And sleep around. <laughs> I'm just saying. And he is that man. But again, she didn't have cervical cancer. But the reason why I think that it contributed from his proclivities is because I think at some point he may have burnt her with something. I just don't feel that in my opinion, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion is just very rare that a man who slept with that many women never possibly burn his wife. And yes, those diseases gonna real Chlamydia, da 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 da. Even though you can get rid of them with a shot, syphilis, all that, they can mess with your reproductive organs. Just saying. So, I'm going to have to get on the side of the people with my little education and say, in my opinion, I do agree that. There was some type of contribution. No proof. No proof. I just feel that way. I feel that way very strongly. Moving right now. Then they like, how do you and Jason get it in if the big boy still sleeping with y'all? Right. Oh, we do it when he is school. You telling me that your grown ass son is still sleeping in the bed with you? Now, my little seven-year-old, no, six-year-old, the six-year-old, I call her the, the uh, bed demon because when I'm knocked out, 
she sneaks and get in my bed. I don't have a man. So she can sneak in there all she want to. But I don't, I promise, sometimes I don't know she in there until <laughs> the alarm clock goes off. And Jason shaved his head in solidarity with her. But, you know, on Love and Mary Huntsville, you know, oh, uh, Maurice couldn't shave his head because he was already bald. Looking like that yellow moon pie. Little Debbie moon pie. Banana moon pie. If y'all know, you know. So, in the next thing, Brooke and Evelyn meet. And Evelyn says, I want to say, this is what imagine happens. You know, when she said that, I immediately thought about Jackie saying that she commits bestiality. Right? <laughs> because those dogs are all over the place. Then, uh, uh, Brooke says, it smells so good in here. Does it? Does it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know bestiality is a sin. That's what the Bible say. That's what it say. I mean, you know, you're not supposed to lay with the animals, but people talk about people laying with other people. That's gay. You drag people that's gay more than the people that sleep with the animals. I'm just saying. You know, I'm not religious, so I don't mess with that Bible no more. But I'm just saying for the other people that do. So, she lets us know they went to Pilates and you went with Brandy. Oh, girl, I've always liked Brandy. Yeah, of course, because you need a teammate. You need an extra butt kiss. So she said, well, I'm beginning to see a different side of Cheyenne. Yeah. Is that side the side that's on Jackie's side? That's the different side you're talking about. So I'm glad you guys are getting along because it was stressing me out. Girl, bye. I want to have a meeting with this morning for the final. Are they trying to do like a. Uh, over there on uh, the Real Housewives in Jersey having fun and supper. Because mm -hmm. we, we just don't know when it comes to Zach A. I mean, we don't know what Zach A. We're going to get. It's Jessica, Jennifer, Jolie. I don't know because we all know Zach A. What? Wacky Jackie? Has a split personality? No. Jackie just needs to learn to push y'all fuck out and keep pushing. I wouldn't be trying to be no sisterhood with these bitches. So everybody arrives in this horrible blue outfit. It's the only outfit that I haven't liked since that Jen has worn this season. What the hell? She looks like Britney Spears when she and Justin Timberlake used to dress it like y'all remember that horrible blue jean outfit that they had on like when he was messing her up in the head. Mm-hmm. I blame Justin. My opinion. He's a dirty, dirty, dirty bird. I can't believe I was a fan of his. Ugh. Well, you live and learn. But anyway, back to this show. Well, you know, I brought him up because of that horrible blue jean outfit. You know, I have ways to get back into it. Uh, you know, go around the circle a little bit. But I bring it all the way back. It's the horrible blue jean outfit. I'm disappointed in Jean. I love the way she dresses. Brandon asked, so what is this, the Ponderosa? I'm the Ponderosa star. Well, this meeting is still a play on what Jackie does to get you all back together. And you ain't fooling nobody, okay? All right, Wacky Jackie. Just she said, stop with the jealousy, stop with the lies. Tell me, you just want to be me. Well, I mean, um, Jennifer, you trying to be a wife, and Evelyn, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, you spread that cool all through the leagues and what's not. So, I guess you know, like Tammy said, the hockey league is the only one left. I mean. Would you mess with a Caucasian man? Because it's predominantly Caucasian. Now, you like to be a black man's preference. 
you know, Afro Latina and all. You know, you very, very light skinned to be an Afro Latina. You know, all that fourteen percent. You know, well, you know, even on the plantation, I've explained this. Fourteen percent was enough to call them, and, and, and back in the day, that's what it was. Just saying, but she, you know, she got a little Caucasian in there too. Mm hmm. So Jen is immediately upset because Cheyenne came with Jackie. Yeah, I ain't mad at You're supposed to have a, 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 a backup. You know, not like Teresa, but in this situation, I don't mind. She's been around the group. I'm trying to say, well, I don't have a place setting because I wasn't expecting you to bring it in my pot. Well, she brought some back. Well, welcome to Jen's Pauline. I wasn't expecting you to come, so we're going to table the things you have going on, Cheyenne. See, Jackie, that's where you're wrong. I didn't like when you did that, though. It's called a Ponderosa, not a Pauline. No, don't do that. It's not your event. I'm with I'm with Jennifer when she right now. <laughs> Jennifer saying, your Ponderosas are never successful. <laughs> Jackie got it back, though. It doesn't look like your uh, Pauline is, either. Jack says, I don't have any problem with you people. <laughs> and then, uh, you know what I'm saying? This is a safe space. It's not. See, that's what you do, Sleveling. You do that. She says, I want to talk about you talking about my daughter. And then... Jackie says, yeah, you're talking about when I called her a building whore after you read my daughter's book, you did that to me first. You came at my child first. Bingo. So how is it that everybody's supposed to take accountability around you, bitch? This hard cheek heifer gets on my damn nerves. Right, because let's not go back over the same tired stuff because you already proven that your daughter is indeed a built a whore. I mean, we can see that, right? She's messing with the game who has been found guilty of SA. He has a seven million seven million dollar restitution. And he like eighty three years old and the child is only what, she twenty nine, thirty? Sick. Sick, I tell you. And not only is he convicted of S.A. Allegedly. The lady was your friend that he was engaged to. But because a, it's your mission to make sure your children are rich and lay up with rich people. You didn't care that your so-called friend was once engaged to that trash-ass ninja. I said what I said. Jack said, I'm not doing this silly shit. It's beneath me. And then Evelyn says, no, it's beneath me. No, it's not. You not above anything, trash. I'm about you, little sex worker. Okay. You're presently there. She has a husband. I'm just saying. Doug Christie is married to Jackie Christie. Presently. Okay. Joe Camel accuses Jackie of not letting Evelyn talk. Okay. What kind of mediator are you? They weren't letting each other talk. And then Evelyn went back and dug up some shit from 82 years ago. Okay. You okay, Ev? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. And that bitch gets on the skin. And you get on the America skin. Now what? Now here comes Missy Brooke. Now she's supposed to be grieving, right? 
But here she come with the mess about somebody that hadn't been on the show in 41 years. Sunday. Is this a grab? So Jen gives her an update and she says, um, well, you know, she was, um, she wouldn't let Evelyn talk. She couldn't even get three sentences out before she started interrupting. Tab a cow. That's what Franklin Turtle said, a.k.a. Brew. A.k.a. Ant Bottom. So Brooke lets the cat out of the bag and she says, well, I've been listening to Jackie's conversations with Sunday on mute. And the one thing she said about you is she's sick of your voice. And ain't we all? <laughs> Uh, nah, nah. Sound like her both cords burnt up. Sound like old Miss uh, Nell over there except for hers. Hers is a little bit deeper than Miss Nell's. And she said, Jennifer, no one's interested about you and Christian getting married. I mean, Jennifer is really looking like Joe Kim at this point. But I said, why call Joe Kim? Mm-hmm. It ain't just Jay-Z. Oh, and she sent your news with your vagina and your breast out. And she absolutely hates Shawnee and Evelyn. She actually said the word, hey, bitch, what did she say about you? That's the question. What did she say about you, whiny, verbal fry, belly girl? Did she talk about your bee stained ass? Shaped up like an ant? Huh? Did she talk about you? Bugs life? She can't understand why you're even here. Are you going to divorce Jason? Because she can't have a baby. We don't understand why you're here. And besides, he cheated on you with over 300 women. We are sick of hearing it. We are. Yes, we are. That's why none of these ladies bring anything to the table that's new for me. Come up with some new shit to talk about. Jackie, did I lie? Why are you mad? I hate Sean and Evelyn too. Next. Oh, and by the way, shout out to Quad from over there at uh, Marriage Medicine. If you want to be executive producer and a member of the show, then you should be able to take whatever tongue lashing you get as well. Because everybody don't like you. So there are going to be some people that hate you, Mr. Helper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm heading off to, to the future of the show because we know she's just going to come back to jump right in the mess. Right? You created the show just like Mariah. But at this point, from my understanding, your EP position is a vanity title because you sold your rights to VH1. Which means, like Bravo... The production company is the only one can hire or fire Jack. Now, you may have some input, but while everybody's worried about her getting fired and getting thanked for her services, just like Brandy, and she keeps coming back, like the cat who came back to be every next day. She can be thankful for her services and VH1 has to find a say so. I'm sorry. I know that hurts. Yeah. Shit, what if there's a very thing that she knows I can't do? Well, you can have some more children if you want to. Adopt some. There are children. I'm going to always promote adoption. There are children all over this country in foster care thanks to you know, 
people who really don't want their children and they have them anyway and then they mistreat them put them in the system and that's going to get even worse now that we have no rules set in place to help these women who can't get a surgically terminated Mm-hmm. Well, you, we, we ain't gonna let you surgically terminate these babies that you don't want. We're gonna put them in the system and we're not gonna take care of them. Remember, here in Mississippi, I was a social worker. And at the time when I was a social worker, the county gave children in foster care and what's the county? $75 a month. The state gave them 100. Most of the money came from the federal government, which has to suffer subsidize because this being a Republican red state, they don't like to give the money to the people who they make have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, being that the federal government is always doing these subsidies, during the time when I was a DHS social worker, they, the federal government was sending out letters to the state government saying, hey, we are tired of subsidizing your foster care children, us paying more into the system for them than you do. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. And it's true. So, go get one of them. Preferably an older one. Get one about 12, the same age as your kid. Vet them. Yes, because these kids in foster care have been through a lot. But they need love. Okay? So, I'm always going to advocate for that. So, you can have kids. And you sort of rich too. With a husband, girl, that's an ideal life for a foster child. And for me, she said, Brooke, having a dad daughter has to make me really a fault. No, I disagree with Jackie on that. You're just an evil bitch anyway. And a kiss ass. But you will buck up at people. But you want to be in the group. You want to be in the circle. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I did drink a smoothie. I don't know why my stomach is brown like that. I hope the mic didn't pick up on that. But child, this is a good mic. Shout out to my mentor for telling me to go get another mic. She picks up on everything. But anyway. That ends the episode with the miserable bitches. <laughs> Discussing Jackie. She shut him down, shut him down, and wasn't even in the building. But you come on in this building, and when you enter my house, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell button so you will be notified when I upload a video. And as I do when I close, I'm going to chunk them up. Tuesdays. Next week's episode, Miss. Uh, Shawnee O'Neal comes back on the scene. Shawnee O'Neal Henderson comes back on the scene with a gangster lean trying to be me. Mm 